I'm Greg DePalma. You're listening to Prime Sports Golf, brought to you by ProGolfWeekly.com and UWager.eu with Jeff Shane and Joel Cook on the Prime Sports Radio Network. On today's show, Bubba wins for a third time at Riviera and captures his first tour win since Riviera two years ago. Phil was in contention again while Tiger missed the cut. This week, we'll preview the Honda Classic with the latest stats, odds, and our picks. The Florida Swing gets underway as Prime Sports Golf on Prime Sports Network starts now. All right, thanks again for joining us for another great week of golf coverage along with our partners at ProGolfWeekly.com and make sure to follow us on Twitter at PrimeSN and receive our latest opinions and on-demand programming alerts. Also, don't forget if you're looking for somewhere to wager and get fast, reliable payouts, click on the You Wager banner on our website. You can get started with wagering on this week's Honda Classic. And we have a special $100 free whisk. Actually, I keep that's a tongue twister. I just can't get over. Give me, give me, write that up for, give me another way to say that, Jeff. $100 free risk wager. I have to say that differently. Uh, we have a special $100 free risk wager. If you sign up this week with a $100 minimum deposit, you'll receive fast and reliable payouts with one of the top sports books in the industry at you wager. So uh, let's first introduce uh, my co-host to the show. And you uh, should know who the first one is. I've already mentioned him. He's a PGA Tour.com contributor. You can find his first look reports every Friday on pjtour.com and uh, it's the Florida Swings so we've got the Florida events coming up over the next couple of weeks and you can get uh, started early uh, next uh, next week on another uh, event on the PGA Tour you can, that's what four or five days early before this show uh, Jeff Shane so Jeff uh, the Florida Swing is here already uh, imagine it, that it, it is well, although you know we, we've had a good seven weeks on the West Coast by the way I, yeah, the, I've never heard free risk I have heard the term risk-free, if that helps. Um, anyway. Special $100 risk-free. It might be better. Instead of free <laughs> risk. So I don't have to do the R and the R back-to-back. -back. I, I like that. Risk-free okay. wager. Always glad to help. Uh, but, that's uh, what you're anyway, there for. Believe it or not, we're actually uh, about one-third of the way through the season. If you go back to the October start, uh, the uh, Genesis Open was the 15th event, uh, and we've got 47 weeks of golf on this uh, on this schedule. So, uh, in a way, it's come up on us really fast. In another way, now you know we really are getting into the meat of the season, which is why we're starting to see the big names that were playing in Abu Dhabi and Dubai and some of those tournaments yep. now start to come over. It's time to get ready for the first major of the year, and you got six weeks to do it. Also joining us from ProGolfWeekly.com. It's a digital magazine covering golf around the world. ProGolfWeekly.com lead writer Joel Cook. And, uh, Joel, one of the things that we noticed right away when we go to the Florida Swing compared to what we've seen uh, in some of the events over the last uh, few weeks or maybe even the last few months, give or take, and that is all of the water that now comes into play. Yeah, it's true, though. Wasn't a ton of that recently, especially this week with the uh, PJ National. It seems like every green has a has sand on one side and a water on the other. It's um, yeah, it's gonna be tough to stay out of out of hazards. Uh, those really the approach games are to be really important this week and, and going forward. All right, so Bubba wins uh, at the Genesis Open, and uh, again, it had been a few years since uh, since his last win, uh, and, and even though that was the, the same event, so he hasn't really won an event other than uh, Riviera, the Genesis Open, since 2015, and he won twice that year. Uh, one was the Hero World, and that's eh, okay. Uh, but the Travelers uh, was probably really his last uh, normal PGA Tour event that he's won besides Riviera. And with uh, the Masters coming up uh, in, uh, in a short while, Jeff, uh, that has got to be good news for Bubba's game. Uh, you know, it's not like, I mean, look, this wasn't really expected. You know, he, he, he had played okay. 
uh, over the last few months of, of, of his action, but nothing like we know that he's capable of. I mean, his, his world ranking had pretty much skyrocketed to uh, heights that we hadn't seen in almost 10 years for Bubba. So uh, the win came, I guess, at the right time to get going. Yeah, it really did. And, uh, and, and I think there were other things involved. We talked about uh, his, his uh, disenchantment. <laughs> with the uh, with, with the colored golf balls, and, uh-huh. and, and they just weren't working for him. And and he hinted last week that toward the end of the year, or maybe throughout much of the year, he was de- dealing with with a health issue that he didn't want to go to, into detail on. But it sapped him of his energy. And if you remember some of his comments toward the end of last year, when I'm eliminated from the playoffs, you're not going to see me for three months. Now we did. Because uh, he did make two starts in the fall season, but it was because whatever he was doing to work on his health was improving him so fast that essentially his wife said, "Get out of the house, go play some golf." Mm. Um, and That's so not good. Uh, now the pieces of the puzzle are starting to fit a little bit better, and and he's kind of refreshed. He he's gone through the tough year. I'm sure he was extremely glad to turn the page on 2017 into 2018. He was starting to play better, and, and so now you can start to see maybe this is a good thing. And coming to Riviera, uh, you know, they call Riviera Hogan's Alley. But now Bubba Watson has won as many Los Angeles Opens as Ben Hogan has. Maybe we ought to call it Bubba's Alley. I know last week I stared at Bubba Watson's name, and I thought, should I take a risk on him? And I eventually decided against it. Uh, and I don't know what you guys did necessarily, but I, I, you know, now I'm to the point where – when Riviera comes up on the schedule, Bubba Watson's going to get consideration, especially in even numbered years. Yeah, it, 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 that's, that's got to be his best venue, then, right? Besides the Masters, I mean, probably even more so. I, mean, I haven't looked. Well, but it certain seems that way. He's got ten career wins on the PGA Tour. Three of them have come at Riviera. Two of them have come at Augusta. Uh, I know one has been New Orleans, one was the Travelers. He may actually have two at the Travelers, now that I think about it. Um, and he had one in China, and that's eight out of ten. I'm doing a pretty good job here. <laughs> but uh, uh, certainly, uh, I think Riviera is one yeah. of those courses that, that fits his eye and fits the way he likes to play the game, when he shapes shots and you just don't hit it long and straight without being a little creative. Joel, I know that in uh, some of your storylines at the at one of your articles this week at Pro Golf Weekly, you're talking about the international players that are, uh, of course, they, we've talked about them coming uh, last the last week or two, and, and and now more and more of them are are coming here this week, and maybe not a coincidence because we take a look and seven of the last eleven winners of this event are players who have been born outside the U.S. And really, when you take a look at the odds out of the top, let's see, out of the top six players, four of the top six are, are non-U.S. born players. Yeah, I feel like my rankings were very heavily towards the international ones this week. Um, I, mean, I don't know if some of this is novelty from not seeing those names in a while, but a lot of those guys are good wind players, which um, it, this is a tournament where the, where the golf are usually up quite a bit. But, um, Good point. Yeah, last week. Well, last week. Um, I mean, we had a bunch of them come in. Tommy Flea would have Tong Lee, Thomas Piers. Most of them, they all made the cut, but they didn't do very well. But part of this this week's group looking better was with Sergio and uh, Terriel Hatton and Louis Ustaz and Alpha Barn Rats. Uh, Viesberger's coming in for for the first time. It's a really good group this week. All right. So, well, what about Mickelson, Joel? Uh, you picked Mickelson as your top pick last week, and he almost uh, came through. But like we've seen uh, with uh, the way things have gone for him during this stretch, uh, it seems like those last five or six holes, he just hasn't been able to come through. I don't know if that's age. I don't know. Maybe it is. Uh, but he just keeps playing like this. He's going to win. Uh, and, and it really looked like after he chipped that one in, uh, I forget what hole it was, uh, you just had a feeling that maybe, and then he had that other putt that was just off the green. You had a feeling that, okay, maybe this is it. And then he went ahead and bogeyed like two of the next three holes, including uh, uh, the the opportunity on that par five that he did not take advantage of. That's yeah, true. It seems like the last few weeks, too, he's just not made enough of a move early on, on Sunday. And he'll get a few birdies in there, but by that point, you know, he 
really losing his margin of error, and then something else happens. And he has three finishes in a row in the in the top uh, six. He's got to be feeling good. Uh, I know he's not in the field this week, but uh, show, uh, I believe he will should be there next week for in Mexico. That was a really uh, tough yeah. golf course, Jeff. Uh, and and it, 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 we, we know how tough it is, but – uh, why is it so tough, or why was it so tough? Because I mean, apparently the golf course is tougher when it's when the weather's nice. Well, sometimes it is because it rolls a little faster. The greens are are a little firmer, harder to hold, and I I I can't say it enough. Riviera is not designed by one of the great names in design. It's it's not a Tillinghast course. It's not a Donald Ross course. Uh, even though it goes back to the, the days of Tillinghast and Donald Ross, but George Thomas just did a fantastic job of, of being creative and, and turning uh, some really great risk-reward holes into masterpieces that stand up today. And, uh, you know, the immediate one that, that probably everybody points to is the drivable par 4 tenth. Um, you can take that risk, but, boy, is there... Uh, is there problems getting up and down if you don't drive it on the green? And you have to weigh, uh, do I take this risk or do I hit an iron off the tee and put it in position to hit a short wedge? The, uh, the sixth green, which nobody would ever design today with a bunker right in the middle of it. Uh, and we saw Patrick Cantlay actually, actually chip over the bunker from one side of the green to the other. It just it makes golfers think. Um, the grasses are, are tough. Uh, if you get into the rough, we don't hear the word a lot, especially now that we've left the West Coast, but the word kikuya is, is, is golfing suicide if you get into that stuff and it's thick. It is as, it is as tough to get out of as, as the heather uh, on a British course. And so when you throw all of that together, I just think it's one of the great masterpieces uh, of early architecture, and it's underrated because it doesn't have the great name attached to it. But I'm really glad to see, and I'm looking 10 years ahead, mm -hmm. but I'm really glad to see that it's going to be the Olympic course when the Olympics come to Los Angeles in 2028. All right, sounds good. So this week, again, the California swing is over. The Florida swing is here. And uh, we are going to see Tiger here, so we'll talk about him in just a little bit, so we're not going to forget about Tiger. Interesting enough, a lot of the players that finished in the top 10 last week are not here this week. So that is kind of interesting. And that includes the, uh, the odds-on favorite to win this week, uh, which is Ricky Fowler. Now, this is uncharted territory for Ricky Fowler because we have Rory McIlroy, Justin Thomas, and some other really good players in the field. And he's the favorite. I don't think we've ever seen Ricky the favorite with with this kind of field in an event. Do you do you recall that, Jeff? I don't recall, um, but I think maybe if if you look at some of the uh, of the statistics, it, it might be justified because sure. not only is he the defending champion, but he plays well at PGA National every year. Um, and the odd thing about uh, about this situation, uh, it was pointed out to me that uh, he's the defending champion and he's won. Uh, he won last year, but he has not won since. And even with not winning since, <laughs> he's still risen in the world golf ranking. What do you mean? Besides the hero? <laughs> yeah, besides the hero. The old hero. Um, yeah, the, that, that hero thing again that we always seem yes. to just uh, put on the side. Yeah, but that's true. I mean, it is amazing that because he was he was in contention so often. That it is strange. You're like, really? Ricky only won, you know, once plus the hero last year. It, it is, it is kind of surprising. Yeah. Okay. So. so let's. Uh, by the way, Jeff, you've got the first pick. I and do. Ricky's the top guy at eight to one. Then Justin Thomas is ten to one. Rory's at eleven to one. So those are the top three: Ricky, Justin, and Rory. Uh, Sergio is here for the first time in the States this season, this year, he's 16 to one. And, uh, then a little bit of a break, uh, between Garcia to Hatton, Fleetwood, Norman Woodland and Harmon. So those are the top guys this week. And again, Ricky is the defending champ. Uh, Thomas was third here a couple of years ago. Rory's won here before 2012. He lost the, the playoff uh, a few years ago as well. 
Uh, Sergio has been runner up here before. He's had good showings here. Uh, I think he's had four top 15s in his career. And let's keep in mind that they've only been playing here at PJ National since 2007, right, Jeff? That's correct. Uh, the nomadic tournaments, which you know, may hold some sort of record for, for host courses, has finally settled down and in a great place. All right. So who are you going to take? Is, is, was it a tough decision? Yes and no. Um, and by the way, what's the common thread between Ricky Fowler, Justin Thomas, and Rory McIlroy, the top three names on that list? Joel? And they're the only, top, and they're only ones in the top ten in the field. Okay, well, that, uh, I'll, I'll give you that one. But they're all based in the Palm Beach area. And oh, yes. going back to, to all well, of all the uh, international there. winners at the Honda, they may, they may be born under a different flag, but their U.S. base <laughs> is in the Palm Beach area. Luke Donald, Camillo Villegas, Rory McIlroy, as we have seen, Ernie Els, all of those guys uh, keep a home in the Palm Beach area. So this is really kind of a home game. For all of them, um, and uh, for me, it came down really to, to a couple of players that have been playing really well and that have played well at PGA National. Ricky Fowler is kind of left a couple of burn marks. Uh, well, really, on all of us <laughs> in the last several months. Um, and I'm just going to go with a guy who's won, who, who's also won at PGA National and also lost the playoff uh, a couple of years ago. And, uh, again, he's playing well, and, and his odds are better. I'm going to take Rory McIlroy as my number one pick. All right. Well, again, uh, McIlroy coming off that 20th place finish uh, last uh, last week. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, I was uh, definitely McIlroy is in the conversation. There's just no doubt about that. And he was playing super well coming into uh, Pebble. Uh, of course, missed a the cut there. Played better last week at Genesis. Did, did he play well enough last week for you, Joel? He did in the last round. Um, that three under 68 was one of the best rounds of the week. I jumped him like 22 spots up the leaderboard. I don't know if that's alone. If that alone is enough for me. I mean, I think he's a decent pick in you know over first overall. It's just uh, I'd like to see a little bit more out of him, but I was encouraged a, a lot more than not, especially the way he finished last week. Looked a lot better with his putter too. All yeah, right. well, and that's that's the thing. Rory is coming off the Poa greens, which he complained about at Pebble. And now he's coming to his U.S. home base where everybody is making the conversion off Poa to Bermuda Grass Green. So he's used to that. So is Justin Thomas and Ricky Fowler, obviously. But this is a benefit to Rory McIlroy. All right. Well, look, I, I could take, I, I, you know, this is one of those uh, weeks where if I, if I was given one of these top seven players, uh, I, I would be happy and take it. Uh, I, I like all these guys. Uh, and, and because of that, and because it did take Ricky to win last year and he won, uh, I'd be silly to not take him here again. Uh, that's just always been my rule, and I'm not going to back away from it now. Uh, Ricky's had a couple of weeks off uh, as well to get his game going. 11th at Phoenix the last time we saw him. So I'm going to go ahead and take Ricky as the 8-1 to one. Uh, favorite. I'm a little bit. I'm, that, that, that's concerned me a little bit. Like I said at the open, I, I think that is something that should be interesting to see how he deals with being the favorite. Uh, but you know, again, he has a really good track record here. So I'll go with Ricky. Jeff goes with Rory and Joel. Uh, that means you have Justin Thomas as the top player left on the board. He missed the cut here last year, third in 2016. Uh, and then you got uh, Garcia, Hatton, Fleetwood, and the rest. This tournament seems so weird for me going through all their past histories. There is hardly anyone who's good here every year. It's crazy how many guys will have missed the cut one year, do great the next year, and so forth. Um, I mean, I'm kind of split between the top two Europe guys here, but I'll go with the one who actually has had some decent success here lately. Uh, Sergio Garcia, three top 15s in his last four tries. He's got three victories in the past year, although only one of them was in the U.S. You know, the Europe one, and he had another one, uh, the Singapore Open. Uh, and the fields for that were, were pretty weak, but it's still there were good recent victories. Uh, he was fifth in strokes gain off the tee last year, eighth in greens in regulation. I think I feel pretty comfortable with him at those odds. What do you think about uh, Sergio, Jeff? Well, for me, I, I knew I was either going to get Sergio or Justin Thomas mm. with the fourth pick, 
<laughs> and uh, whoever was going to be left was, was going to be it. So Sergio was definitely on my list. He's one of those guys, even though he doesn't keep a base in Florida anymore, uh, he's, he's now in Dallas, uh, newly married and all of that. But uh, it, Florida is the place where he kept a base for a number of years. Even as a, as a young amateur, uh, he would uh, make his base in South Florida. So he's incredibly comfortable at PGA National and, and on those greens as well. All right, so Joel's going to take Sergio at 16-1 to 1 as his top pick. And, Jeff, that means you're going with Justin Thomas? That means I'm going with Justin Thomas. Must must be pretty nice to have Rory and Justin Thomas as your top two picks. <laughs> Feels like a major, huh? Yeah, it, it does, and, and it's, it's a solid group. It's 10 of the top 25 in the current world rankings uh, that are, are coming to PGA National, and that might be actually a little bit down from previous years, and that I think that's just kind of you know the the fluctuation of the rankings uh, from year to year. Usually, it's about twelve out of twenty five. All right, so Fowler, Thomas, McElroy, Garcia, all off the board. Those are the top four players, and uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make it uh, pretty much five for five. I'm going to take the uh, player who finished fourth year last year, so at least he was able to get his feet wet. Uh, and, uh, that, in, and, and by the way, I mean, he's been really red hot, uh, 10 straight top twenties, uh, worldwide, including four top fives and two wins. Terrell Hatton is looking for the big win, uh, to, uh, try, cause that's the one thing that we're waiting for with Terrell Hatton. Uh, isn't it Joel? We're waiting uh, for Hatton to win, win one of those big events or win in the States. That's, that's, that's the next big accomplishment for him. Yeah, it's true. He got off to a good start with the tied, uh, the fourth year. He was, uh, fourth at another tournament, um, then too. He's completely tanked in the middle of the year, but he's, like, he's had 10, uh, consecutive top 20 finishes now in Europe with two wins, two other third place finishes. Um, I mean, he's definitely one of my European, he was the one that he and, uh, Sergio was debating between the first pick. Um, I'm not sure I had him. I mean, he did finish fourth last year. Um, I didn't really have any concerns there except that it seems like i got kind of burnt on tommy fleetwood last week that was all the recent great europe thing and then rory mcelroy the week before i think he hadn't can, can uh break that trend and have a good tournament right here but that's what just um, put him a touch behind sergio in my mind yeah what do you think about hatton's game jeff uh worldwide uh as a uh, as as a big time player uh because one of the things that, that i have noticed is is at times he kind of, I don't know. He, kind, I don't know if he, he I, I think he loses it like John Rahm, but nerves. He, he's been that way in the past, so he's been much better at that. But that's something that that he he tends to, you know, he, he tends to have to deal with in, in, in you know when, when he's uh, when he's playing. But that's maybe also part of the reason why when he's on his game, uh, maybe he he kind of is in sort of a zone, uh, and that's why taking him now would probably make a lot of sense but what do you think about well, his game? yeah yeah i think so i mean obviously the talent is there but he does seem to ride very hot and then when he cools off he goes into the deep freeze a little bit the two wins that he's had in the past year came in consecutive weeks the alfred dunhill and the italian open and he's continued to play well uh ever since then the last three months of of 2017 and, and the first two months of 2018 although he's taken some time off but you go back before that, and uh, you know, in in the late spring, summer of last year, he ran off a series of five consecutive missed cuts. So he's kind of in that streak player mode. When he's hot, you ride him, and this is a good time to ride him. But when he, when you see that MC pop up on his chart, you got to get off him for you know perhaps a couple of months. All right, so Hatton at twenty five to one is my second pick. Joel, who's your second pick uh, with Tommy Fleetwood? The, the top remaining player on the board right now at 25 to one. Then you got Norin, Woodland, and Harmon at 33 to one. Reed, Berger, and Knox at 40 to one. And everybody else uh, is in the long shot category, 50 to one or higher. Um, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Harmon at 33 to one uh, this week. He had, he had that cooled off a little bit. I mean, he missed the cut, Tory Pines, but a lot of players do. But uh, if five straight top eight to begin the year. He's ninth in driving accuracy, fourth in greens and regulation. He's putting great. But I think his game fits it really well. He doesn't have any 
super outstanding finishes there, but he did have a final round 64 one year um, to finish T11, and this his form's been so good. Hopefully, um, the last three taking the last three weeks make him feel a little better after that uh, miscut at, at Tory. But aside from that, he's been uh, tremendous uh, all year so far. All right, Brian Harmon, you've uh, taken him more than anyone else on the show, 33 to one, and uh, he is your second pick. All right, Jeff. So you got McElroy and Thomas as your top two picks. Once again, Fleetwood is the top guy remaining at twenty-five to one. Who are you going to go with? I was kind of hoping Harmon would fall one more slot. So, oh, you, uh, you like them? Get my you get my endorsement, Joel. But uh, why do you like uh, him? Just because he's got great touch around the greens, and if the wind kicks up uh, and greens and regulation become uh, a little bit more scarce, you're going to have to scramble pretty well. And I think that's where uh, that's where Brian Harmon's strength really comes forward. And so uh, he's also well-rested. He took the last three weeks of the West Coast swing off. He knows his, his, his priorities, his schedule. Uh, he's definitely more familiar with, with the courses on this side of the country being a, a Savannah native. So uh, that, you know, that's why I was leaning toward him quite a bit. Um, I, okay, the other guy I was looking at in this slot is still there, um, and there's a certain part of me that says and maybe you know it's a little too soon uh, after uh, after posting an emotional victory, but he's playing so well. He has made his base in Florida for a number of years and in South Florida for the last two or three years, uh, and he was second last year, so it's kind of hard not. Uh, to go with Gary Woodland, unless you just don't think he can put uh, two uh, wins together in the span of a couple months. But I- I'm going to take that risk with Woodland. All right. Yeah. Well, maybe in the span of a month, right? When was the last time you won? Yeah, probably. Uh, you know, just just on that you know, four week situation. Phoenix, yeah. That's... Pebble. Yeah. Yeah. It would be. It would be within one month. Yeah. He had the uh, the miscut at Pebble, and then he had the week off last week. Uh, but look, I mean, he's he's had a lot of time, a couple of weekends uh, to rest up after that win, kind of refocus himself. And like you said, runner up here last year, sixth in 2015. So he likes the golf course. And maybe because he was able to win and, and, and do it in the final round coming from behind, uh, maybe that is something that it, that uh, can boost his confidence, get the, get that very next pebble miscut, which could have been just out of distraction after winning out of the way. And uh, 33 to 1 may, may not be a bad choice and not a surprise to see him uh, right after the big names. Okay, uh, I'm going to I have uh, uh, for me, it's, it's going to come down to either Fleetwood or Norin. And uh, this is uh, this is a tough one, but I'll go with Fleetwood. Uh, I'll take Tommy. Uh, I'll I'll go with uh, another twenty-five to one shot. Uh, I I know Fleetwood hasn't uh, played here, uh, but it was coming off uh, a solid uh, final day uh, last week, sort of like uh, Rory came. You know, had, had a good day on Sunday. Just coming up a good Sunday, and this that was his first uh, venture into uh, you know into the U.S. Uh, so far this year. Or so. So he's got some rounds under his belt, a uh, very good player, and I'll take Fleetwood as my third choice of 25 to 1, Joel. So that means uh, Norin is the top player left on the board, and then you got Reed Berger and Knox before the long shots. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Norin at 33 to 1. I mean, Mr. Cod is only 10th here, but that was like four years ago. He's clearly a different uh, at least in the States, he seems to have figured out a little bit the last uh, few weeks. He's a good, great fit for the course. Uh, the Riviera, he's played really well. All four of his rounds were par or better, which, um, which is uh, good considering that this DJ uh, National scoring doesn't tend to be that high. Uh, I'm happy that he didn't have any of those huge rounds this week. And um, yeah, he's, he's been looking uh, pretty good this, this year. I think he can play in the win, too. So I, I don't mind that. And there at 33. Uh, by the way, I, w- I will say, uh, just let you, let you guys know that before we do get to our alternate picks, uh, we'll uh, open them up uh, into the 50 to one players as well, because only three all there's only three players left. We've taken all the favorites, uh, so there's only yeah. three players left that are not considered long shot. Uh, so none I'm of us. Only one Reed right now. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, Reed, Berger, and Knox are the only three left. So we'll go into the 50 to 1 shots for our first alternate as well. So let's go right into the long shots then, Jeff. Uh, this has to be 50 to 1 players or more, which is just about everybody left on the board. Uh, before you make your pick, uh, what do you, what can you tell us about Dylan Fratelli? Uh, because Dylan Fratelli, uh, here's a guy that is now 47th in the world and, uh, he's, uh, what has he got? I think he's got a couple of straight top tens coming in here. He's got eight top twenties over his last nine, including three top fives and a win. So is this just a run? Or is this a player? Uh, is this a player that we should be keeping an eye on? Is this a for real player? I think this is a player that that we should keep an eye on. He was a very talented player. Went to the University of Texas. Was actually a teammate of Jordan Spieth at the University of Texas. I, I, I may or I may be off on this, but there's there's a part of me that thinks that they might have even been roommates at one point. Uh, so there there's a lot, a lot of talent there. What did you say, Joel? I'm sorry, Joel. Oh, I thought I heard that too, but I couldn't. I didn't. I, I didn't know if it, whether I'd actually heard that or if it was just something that sounded like it'd be a good story. But I heard that too, so I feel, I feel a little better about that now. <laughs> but anyway, he's got a lot of talent. Uh, his South Africa heritage, um, you know, allowed him uh, maybe a, a little bit easier path to to go to the European tour. I don't know if he tried to start, uh, you know, through Web.com qualifying school and. You know, when he missed that, he uh, decided to go the European route, but he's been playing very solidly. He was runner-up uh, in, in one of the events, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the opening event of, of the final series uh, on the European Tour last year, and then he was fourth at the finale in Dubai. Uh, so he's been playing very consistently, and uh, he now has his ranking up in the top 50 in the world. I think he's going to stay there for a while. All right. Well, he's on the board as a long shot. Uh, other long, there's, and there's a lot of good names in the long shot category, uh, and that includes Tiger Woods at fifty to one. What do you think about Tiger, Joel? You uh, missed a cut last week, but again, maybe not a surprise. We had talked about the fact that uh, Riviera was not a, a, a good golf course for him. Not really. I mean, the, he doesn't have a ton of success at PJ nationally. The only played it three times. Or, or except did he? I think he was. No, that was Riviera again. But um. Yeah, it's just a little hard after last week. That second round was was pretty bad, and um, you know, it's a course that's going to take the driver out of a lot of their hands. So that's probably good for him right now. And, All right. Um, you, you know, if he can uh, scramble, do well around the greens, he's he's a threat. But uh, I have a hard time putting too much into him. It seems weird seeing him at fifty to one, even if that's probably a good place for him. Oh yeah, right now it is, uh, and also fifty to one. You got. Your boy from last week, Scott Stallings, uh, yeah, he who, good. who stayed hot again. Uh, so now is the time to take Scott Stallings uh, until his next missed cut. And you can stay away from him for a year. Uh, he finished fourth. Uh, also, uh, Cabrera Bayo is playing solid golf. He's at 50 to 1. Webb Simpson's at 50 to 1. Uh, Ustazen makes uh, his first trip to the States this year. Uh, he's 66 to 1. Uh, McDowell had himself a good week last week until the 77 on Sunday. He's got a good track record at this golf course. Uh, he's 66 to one. Ryan Moore is starting to play some good golf. He's got two top tens last three in contention last week. He's 66 to one. Uh, and, uh, and then he got a whole bunch of other players. So, uh, Jeff, uh, who's going to be your official long shot? Well, before I before I do that, it, something just dropped into my email inbox as we were talking about Tiger Woods. Um, he is he was named uh, literally minutes ago as uh, one of the vice captains to Jim Furyk for the Ryder Cup in France uh, coming up next year, which probably not a bad thing because I don't think he's going to make it as a player. Okay. Anyway, I thought you were going to say he withdrew from a back injury. <laughs> No, no, just uh, yeah, just newsflash from the PGA of America. All right. um, my long shot is actually one of the guys, that, maybe he got mentioned in passing, but uh, I, I don't recall his name being brought up, but he's sitting there at 50 to 1, and he's, he, even though it, you, you don't find it much on his bio because it says he was born in Cleveland, true, he makes his current residence in Auburn, Alabama, true, but he spent his formative years as a teenager 
in South Florida and, and, and had a very good junior career before going off to college at Auburn, which is why he lives there now. But Jason Duffner has always had a very good record at PGA National. He's coming in really, really rested because he hasn't played since the career builder, but uh, he, he has four top 20s uh, since the, the tournament moved to PGA National. He was 14th last year, and his game finally, after a lot of struggles on and off the course, has started to come around in recent months. All right. Jason Duffner is the uh, 50 to 1 long shot for Jeff, 14th last year. And yeah, he's uh, he's got some good finishes here, uh, and as you said, well rested. So Jason Duffner, and yeah, you, you've taken Jason Duffner uh, quite a bit on this show. Joel, was he in your yeah. was he in your possibilities? Yeah, he was. I um, mean, those wedge games always he's putting a lot better than than uh, normal so far. Which I don't know if that's sustainable, but as long you know, he's he's certainly feeling it there. At Fifty to one, those are it's definitely a good long shot pick. All right. Also uh, at fifty to one uh, is Adam Scott. He was 53rd last week. It just isn't the same yet. Uh, he won this event in 2016, 14th last year. So, look, he uh, played well uh, historically at Riviera. We said, okay, if he doesn't play well here, that's not a good sign. Uh, or at least he made the cut. Uh, but here's another venue that he's had good success at. So very important for Adam Scott to have a good week this week for us to be convinced that he's back. Uh, but he is 50 to one. It's a big number for a player of his caliber that has played well at this golf course. Doesn't mean I'm taking him, but I am going to take another 50 to one shot at player uh, that I'm starting to catch up now with Jeff uh, by taking his name, uh, and that's Chesson Hadley. Uh, I'll go with Hadley. He's had a couple of decent top 25s here in the last few years, and uh, he has been playing some pretty uh, solid golf lately. Uh, he's made a, a matter of fact, he hasn't missed a cut. I don't believe. Uh, since uh, the web, well, pretty web, you know, I forget exactly what. Let's see, when was that? That was web.com last August. So that's uh, it's been a while, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take him as my long shot at 50 to one. Uh, were you considering him at all, Jeff, or are you gonna pass on him this week for sure? I looked at him. There are so many good 50 to ones that, yep. that you could fill out your lineup <laughs> with 50 to ones if you really wanted to. So I looked at him. But obviously, Duffner was ahead of him. I, I, there's another uh, player or two that were that was ahead of him. But uh, I, I don't have any any problem with uh, with with his selection at all. All right. And uh, by the way, uh, Benny on and Brent Snedeker are also at fifty to one. Snedeker uh, is now being able to get into the action some more. Uh, this is his fifth event of the year. Uh, and uh, he's maybe somebody to keep an eye on, but he just doesn't have uh, any positive results here. I don't even know when the last time he played here, uh, but uh, he hasn't had any any top 25s uh, in his career at at, uh, at this event. Uh, he's paired with Tiger, so that might help or not at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> does that mean uh, with 50, with uh, Scott Stallings available, you, will you take Scott Stallings again as your long shot, Joel? I liked him a lot at 125 to one odds last <laughs> week. Um, well, I'm not going to go with him this week. I'm actually I'm going to go a little further down, not quite to 125, but um, I'm going to take guy. Actually, Greg and I have both talked him up on the show a, a few times. But um, we, uh, this guy was third place uh, going into the last round after a third round 65. Kind of got off to a rough start on Sunday and plummeted way down the board. I'm hoping I, mean, I, I think Emiliano Vario is a really good fit here. Um, just the way he's been um, lately, his putting's been really well. He um, he's made all seven of his cuts this season. He's been accurate. He's in the top 40 both in driving accuracy and greens of regulation. Uh, he just plays a little better around the greens. So I could see him getting into that mix again. But uh, he looked good last year, and hope I hope he's one of those guys that can learn from that bad stretch in the fourth round. Okay. All right. All right. Grio. I was definitely, uh, it was not a consideration. I'm not sure I would have taken him, but at 80 to one, I mean, he's worth a buck. Why not? Uh, we're still waiting for him to get back into contention though. That's for sure. But Hey, he's 80 to one. That's uh that's a big number. Uh, Jeff, uh, you're next with your top alternate. And again, this will include the remaining three players that are not long shots. Patrick Reed, Berger, who was uh, a playoff loser to Padraig Harrington three years ago, 
And Russell Knox, who's got a third and a second, he lost in the playoff four years ago, I think four years or four or five years ago. So Knox and and uh, and and Berger have both lost playoffs here before. They're forty to one. And then you go to the remaining fifty to one shots: Scott Snedeker on Fratelli, Kazire, Stallings, Schneider, Jans, uh, 2014 champ Henley, Kisner, Cabrera, Bayo, Simpson, and Woods. Like I say, you could fill out an entire roster <laughs> with some of those 50 to 1. What do you think uh, about Adam Scott, goal. by the way? I just think that that he has not found, mostly with the putter, but but I think the the problems with the putter may have started to creep into the rest of his game. And, That's still you know, a problem. We've seen him fall outside the top 50 now, and he just he doesn't show, he, he might show one week of, you know, feeling good over standing over the ball, but it, it doesn't last. And, uh, you know, kind of a mystery at, as to what it's going to take to break him out of it. But uh, first time in 17 years now uh, that he is outside the top 50. And unlike Phil Mickelson, who was able to hit the brakes before falling out, it, it's not happening for Adam Scott. All right. Who's your alternate in case McElroy, right. Thomas, or Woodland are are unable to play on Thursday. I'm going to go with another another local. He actually grew up in the Palm Beach area, has a real comfort factor, and is one of those playoff losers from from years past. And, and with the exception of last week at Riviera, he's been very consistent. He had four consecutive top 15 in front of that, and that's Daniel Berger. So he's going to be my first alternate. All right, so Berger, yeah, a Berger, I, I definitely would have considered him more uh, a little bit. I mean, he hasn't been been contending enough on, in the final round, even though he'd been playing okay this year. And then he has the missed cut last week, and he's missed the cut the last two years. So I was a little bit concerned with that. Uh, but uh, look, before the missed cut, he had been playing okay. He's got a good memory here, and he's a big number at forty to one. Uh, not a bad idea for an alternate. Okay, um, you know, look, I, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and 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 play that tune again, the Ali Schneider Jans tune, and I'm gonna be I'm, I'm gonna be persistent with this, um, at least for another week because, and 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 this is the reason, uh, because if you look at it, he's been, uh, let's see, in his last. Seven, 19 miscut, seven miscut, three miscut, and then this would be his eighth. So <laughs> he, he's due for – so if you look at it, uh, he, he's, fo- he, he's followed up the miscuts with a better result each time. 19, seven, three. So, so now he's ready. He needs those weekends off to refresh himself and to come back. Maybe he'll finish second this week. All right, so I'll, I'll take Ali uh, one more time. I know he doesn't have a, a big track record here, but then again, he's really young, uh, doesn't have a lot of experience everywhere. At least he played better last year than when he missed the cut in 2016. So I'll go with Schneider Jans as my 50-1 to 1 alternate. And, Joel, who was your first alternate? Uh, well, I'm tempted to, for the third straight week to go with uh, Cabrera Bayo, but I don't know. He's just uh, been so up and – Statistically, still playing well, but he's been so up and down during the rounds. Like last week, there was at one point he was four over through nine holes, and by the sixth hole on day two, he was somehow leading for a little bit before falling way back. But um, as an alternate, I, I like the guy with a, you know, a little bit of positive course history. Russell Knox, I think, is coming back around. He's had some decent finishes lately, sixth in greens in regulation, and he's, he's got second and a third place in the tournament in the last four years. All right, so uh, that means you both you guys went ahead and grabbed the two out of the three remaining 40-to-1 shots. So that leaves Patrick Reed as the only player in the non-long shot category that we did not choose. Patrick Reed, uh, why is that? Why, why why do you not like Patrick Reed, Joel? He just hasn't had it lately. I thought he was kind of – I mean, I got burned on him a few weeks ago because I, I think I took my first or second. But – um. 
he just doesn't. He was starting to pick. Yeah, he was starting to pick it up again late in the year. It wasn't winning, but he was getting consistently high performances. And just something that's different going on with him right now. He's not. He's not very accurate, and doesn't seem to have that uh, demeanor that we do see from him. All right. Do you agree with that, Jeff? Yeah, I, I, it kind of surprises me that that he has not heated up here in the early part of the season. Uh, maybe Florida. Uh, will fit him a little bit better. If, if we recall, Patrick Reed has played well in Hawaii, not so well in California, and then uh, has has played all right in, in in Texas and places on the East Coast. So does does Florida kind of mark where the improvement comes? And you know, we got the Houston Open coming up, and we got the match play in Austin. Uh, so. Th- it's still kind of worth watching to see what happens here in the next few months, but I'm surprised that he's spinning his wheels as he has been. All right, Jeff, last pick, alternate number two. If Jason Duffner is unable to play on Thursday, who are you going to go with? I've been batting this one around for a little bit. There's actually like three or four names that I have I felt comfortable with. It's just a question of, which one I want to go with. I'm going to go with the guy who was hot a little bit at Riviera, even though he kind of drifted on the weekend, he does play a lot better in Florida. He's got five top 15 uh, at PGA national. Graham McDowell needs to step up win Graham McDowell. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, disappointing Sunday for sure. With that 77, you know, it's kind of like Mickelson and well, not, that bad, but you do wonder, you know, age, if that's, a, if that's a big difference in these final rounds. He's not an old guy, of course, but he's definitely older than a lot of these young guys and uh, doesn't have the power game as well as the Bubba Watsons. Uh, but, yeah, he's been very strong at Honda, and uh, that was a, a big a big three rounds for Graham because he came in to the event uh, missing four straight cuts. So that's a positive sign for Graham McDowell now coming to a a venue that he's been very good at, probably one of his best venues in the U.S., and uh, sitting there at 66 to 1. All right, so McDowell is uh, your alternate. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and uh, take your Mr. Stallings at 50 to 1 as my second alternate. Uh, He's just playing too well right now. Uh, with the three straight top 25s, and he hasn't won since 2014. And if he doesn't uh, finish this run uh, with a win, then he'll be gone for another year or so, probably. So uh, 21st last year, so that's okay. I'll take Scal- uh, Scott, Scott Stallings as my second alternate. I'm surprised that you didn't take him. In, uh, you, know, you had an opportunity to take him the last couple of picks, Joel. Yeah, I did. Um, just. Yeah, like you said, he he's hot right now. He's very streaky. I could just as well see him disappearing from next. But this is probably still a good time to take him while he's still fifty to one odds. Um, he's definitely someone I was considering again. All right. So who are you going to go with, Joel, as your final pick in case Emiliano Grillo does not play on Thursday? Well, I'm kind of tempted by Ustazen, but he just kind of seems to pick and choose his spots when he wants to do well, and I don't know that I trust he's going to do that this week. So I'll go with a uh, different. International players played fairly well lately. Uh, Kierdeg at the Barn Rats. Mm. Um, he hit a win recently. That was in that thing in, in Perth. I believe <laughs> his, his final uh, his opponent in the final round was James Nitty. So that tells you how strong that field was. Yeah. But um, he, he, play, he started off really well at the, in China earlier this year. The, he got off to 65 70 star before fading on the weekend. He's uh, He's got a game that seems to be coming around. I could see him. Um, He's up to 38th in the world. He, he could uh, do some damage here this week. Yeah, another player that is, I mean, he broke out really a few years ago with the three wins in 2015, uh, but then uh, the, you know, slid back in 2016 and uh, really has just started to pick things up uh, over uh, really the last couple of months. Uh, he, he's been really good. I mean, to go all the way back to the Italian Open, uh, he's got a bunch of top 25s. He's got uh, two runner-ups. So he's got uh, two wins. So he's playing uh, as good as we've ever seen him play. And his ranking uh, is uh, – now Now keep in mind, his year-end best ranking was 38th. And right now he's at 37th. 
like you said, 37th. So, yeah, Abi Bonrod is somebody that, uh, sort of like Terrell Hatton, if he's going to take that next step, he's got to do it in the U.S. Yep. All right. And interestingly enough, this is his first start on U.S. soil since the Web.com Tour Finals in 2016. Was that because his game slipped? Uh, because he didn't get a he didn't get a card either on the PGA Tour. Uh, I, I think he would have had Web.com status if he wanted, but his status on the European Tour was better, so he chose to concentrate on the European Tour. By the way, players not here include uh, the top three players: Dustin Johnson, John Rahm, and Jordan Spieth. Uh, then you have the fifth and sixth players: uh, Rose and Matsuyama are not here. Jason Day is not here, and of course Brooks Kepka, uh, the ninth-ranked player in the world, has got the injury, so he is not here. So uh, there are some top players not here. Uh, will we, do you know if we're going to see all those guys next week, Jeff? Well, because next week is is the uh, World Golf Championships event, I think we will see all of those guys except for Brooks Kepka. And uh, I, I'm, I don't think Bill Haas qualifies, but uh, obviously with him being in the accident, auto accident last week in Los Angeles, uh, he's going to be on the shelf for a couple more weeks as well. All right. Other guys to consider uh, that definitely were in the running this week. Uh, you know, I actually did come pretty close to taking Cabrera Bayo, Joel. I was thinking about him. You know, he's been consistent and he's got that international flair to this event. So and he did play here last year. So he's got uh, 37th isn't completely bad. So I was thinking about him at 50 to 1. And uh, I was thinking about my old uh, trusted uh, uh, boy there, Martin Keimer. Even though he had a 53rd last week, uh, he still made a cut and a golf, tough golf course. Uh, first time in the States this year and finished fourth here last year. Uh, and, and he's had really good uh, um, history before, as we know, in the state of Florida. So Martin Keimer at 66 to 1 I was thinking about. Uh, and definitely I was close to taking Ryan Moore uh, because of the way he's playing at 66 to 1. So he was someone else uh, that I was thinking about. And uh, Billy Horschel would have to be a consideration at 100 to 1 because he's finished fourth and eighth here the last two years. So keep uh, him in mind. Sean O'Hare might not be a bad uh, deep long shot at 150 to 1. He's got a bunch of top 25s here. So he's another guy. Uh, but, that's, you know, if you're looking for a deep fantasy play, uh, he's somebody to consider as well. Other big names here uh, include Retief Goosen, uh, 2015 champ, Padraig Harrington, and Jim Furyk missed the cut last week. So he's back, uh, and he's playing here this week. Uh, what about you, Joel? Who else did you leave out that you were considering? Well, I was going to mention Horschel. He's definitely a Florida guy, and he's played well at the tournament before, even if his current year isn't um, hasn't been spectacular so far. But uh, Chris Kirk's had really been coming around lately. You know, he's got three top 11s in his last six. Um, yeah, those were – I thought about Keimer a bit too. He's uh, you know, pretty solid on these courses, even if the results haven't, haven't been there yet. Ryan Palmer has played this tournament well before, and, and he missed the cut last week, but he had a little thing going there for a little bit, 80 to 1 odds. Yeah, you got to watch so, out though, right, Jeff, with Ryan Palmer once he misses that cut. Probably. And it's a, it's a question of where he feels comfortable, and, and he's kind of been off and on in Florida. And I, I think that, that going from Riviera to PGA National and just the change in coast, change in time zones, change in grass, there are guys that play really well on the West Coast and then don't play well in Florida, and some of them choose to only play one or two events in Florida. There are some guys who, as we saw with Duffner and, and, and Daniel Berger, didn't bother much with the West Coast. They're going to load their schedule now because this is where they feel comfortable. All right. Who else did you like, Jeff? Well, the the guy, the, the, the two that I left on the board when I took McDowell were the Kiz brothers, Kisner and Kizire. Um, I, I think both of those guys um, are, are much more accustomed to the conditions. Uh, you know, one, they're, they're uh, Georgia or South Carolina guys. Uh, use, uh, very good putters, uh, and I think going from the West Coast to the East benefits both of them. Uh, Horschel makes makes a lot of sense in, in that same vein, and and uh, I, I was looking at Brant Snedeker as well. I think we have now seen mm -hmm. uh, with consecutive top 25s that, that maybe the injury issues are behind him sure. for now. It, it does seem to be a little bit chronic, but 
he's also a very good player around the greens. And if the winds come up, and they often do, uh, then that is going to play into his strength. Yeah, I was thinking about him as well uh, because of the way that he is trending. I just didn't like the fact that he doesn't have any positive results here in his career. Uh, that is what scared me off. Uh, but yeah, uh, you do like the way he's trending. And if he has a good, if he, if he ends up with a good top 20 this week, then he's uh, a really good play his next time out, I would think. Uh, where is Snedeker right now? Where is he? Is he still top 50? I think he. I'm gonna. I'm gonna look here. Um, he may be hovering right around, or I think just under. He's at 50. The, uh, the... No, I mean ranking. Where is he on his world oh. ranking? He's 67. Okay. And uh, some of that was because of the layoff, the injury. So we won't see he him next week. Any points? Uh, uh, unless he gets in on another exemption, um, and, and it's not strictly top 50. Uh, you, if you were, if you made it to, uh, East Lake last year, that gets you in, although that didn't happen with Snedeker because of the injury. So I okay. think he would need to have a, a top three type result uh, to, uh, either boost him into the top 10 in FedEx cup this week. And even that may not work for him, but it, it might work in terms of getting his world ranking up from 67 into the top 50. All right, so that'll wrap it up. Uh, Joel, uh, you've got your Honda storylines at ProGolfWeekly.com, and uh, some of the uh, tidbits that you're going to talk about include the struggles of some past Honda champs. Yeah, there's a number of guys in the field. Uh, if you look at a lot of the recent champs, I mean, you have some good ones in there in, in, a, in a Rory and a Ricky, but a lot of players um, – who've won it are playing pretty poorly now. Even if you want to look past Adam Scott, you just have Michael Thompson, who was really just relevant. seemed like he was just relevant for the U.S. Open that one year. But, and he won it once. Uh, Rory Sabatini's been pretty terrible since, since he won it. Uh, Camilo Vajegas is completely lost. He's not, he's not even – he's just barely inside the top 400 now. And he, uh, he has 79 last year to open up and miss the cut. Um, this is yeah, actually yeah, Vegas has the scoring record here at PGA National too, I believe, 13 under and won by five strokes one year. But yeah, we got these winners that have just been kind of not haven't been seen as much recently, you know, lately since then. All right, and of course you also have your rankings for this week's event. Uh, and uh, do, do you have uh, your what are the winners or losers from last week? What was that article? Uh, just a three up, three down. Okay. Do you have that this week? I do have that on there. Um, it was, yeah, it's mostly just got more into Bubba and Phil. And, uh, yeah, we like got, the downs. Got, we want to hear about the downs. Who are, who are the downs? Um, <laughs> let me pull that up real quick. Um, Dustin, uh, Thomas Peters, Dustin Johnson. It was actually, just, it was put together based on my uh, wrap up from last week. I believe that's, that's what's uh, uh I mean guys that you thought from. were going to play better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Dustin uh yeah. had definitely considering how well he had played at that golf course. Uh he had some really bad holes and yeah, two weeks in a row in uh in round 4 now that he's not looked good. Well, well, keep an eye on that. Uh cuz he's the defending champ next week, right? Yes, that's true. Yeah. All right. All right, Joel. So uh, we will uh, check back with you again next week for the World Golf Championship event. And uh, Joel J. Cook on Twitter? Yes. Yep. All right. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll check out all your work at ProGolfWeekly.com. And how how many writers they have at ProGolf Weekly? Uh, I'm not sure what we're up to now. We've had some more recently. I'm, I'm the lead. I'm the one sitting there beginning we seem to we've got a few more in there um they've been working remotely so i don't kind of see them a whole lot but they um we, we're starting the site's been growing quite a bit and we're getting some more writers and a lot of good content on there all right awesome joel appreciate it we'll talk to you next week thank you all right that's joel cook and uh jeff you've got your uh your uh, report here at prime sports network the around the tours report uh, what are the uh, highlights of that report uh, for anybody that wants to read that one? 
Well, we, we, we touched on uh, touched on Bubba's win and, and, you know, kind of the interesting week that it was. He did a little moonlighting on the basketball court and, uh, you know, didn't didn't go well when uh, Tracy McGrady came at him uh, like a menace. But uh, we, we touched on that. Uh, we also looked a little bit deeper into the futility of Tiger Woods at Riviera. It's the one course that has really had his number over the years. Uh, and then uh, kind of away from that, uh, Augusta National, maybe looking at uh, an expansion mode. Um, nothing major, but uh, there's one hole that, that may get uh, a little bit of a tweak. And uh, for the right price, you can put your beverage of your own choice into John Daly Claret Jug. All right. That, uh, I'm not sure that'll work, but okay. All right, Jeff. <laughs> so we'll see you again next week for the WGC event. And we'll look out for your first look report at uh, uh, pjtour.com on Friday. So uh, appreciate it as always. And uh, we also want to remind everybody to uh, check us out on Twitter at PrimeSN. Uh, and uh, don't forget also, you want to place a wager on the Honda Classic, then you can do that by clicking on the You Wager banner. You got a $100 risk free wager if you sign up this week with a $100 minimum deposit. Thanks for tuning in to Pro to Prime Sports Golf from our friends at ProGolfWeekly.com and UWager.eu. For Jeff Shane, for Joel Cook, I'm Greg De Palma. We'll be back on the air once again on Prime Sports Network. Actually, uh, well, yeah, we're always going to be live on Prime Sports Network, but we'll talk to Dan Shanka from Our Lads tomorrow at two o'clock as we get into the Our Lads Guide to the 2018 NFL Draft Shows. Uh, with uh, just about less than a week to actually a, a, an exact week to go uh, before the NFL Combine. So we'll have our draft talk uh, really kicking into high gear starting tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And then we'll uh, really be kicking in high gear our college basketball talk as well with Scott Zolatoro. So a lot of college basketball tar- talk getting underway starting tomorrow and draft talk starting tomorrow right here on the Prime Sports Radio Network. We'll see you next week for more golf coverage.